when you're creating virtual desktops, you can just create, I don't know, a bunch of virtual desktops, or you can use automation tools. If you are not using automation tools, you are probably creating more work for yourself than less. In fact, in VMware View 5, there are these things called automated pools with full virtual machines that presents a little bit of limited automation to make the process of dealing with virtual machines that much easier. I put together recently a training series on VMware View 5 for CBT Nuggets, and out of that series, I've extracted this micro nugget to show you how to create a VMware View 5 automated pool with a bunch of full virtual machines. Let's go ahead and create that now. Here's an automated pool. Okay, this is different from the manual pool. Again, I'm going to be able to use this to automatically create virtual machines when I see fit. Okay, I can choose to dedicate certain users, specific users to specific VMs, or I can choose uh, floating. We talked a little bit about that in the, uh, the manual mode. It's worth mentioning here that um, when I was talking earlier about your users and your use case and, and, and the need for personalization and how you deal with personalization, remember that direct, mapping a user to a specific virtual machine can be great if you know that you want that VM to always be assigned to that user. And you think about that. When the, v, the user is not using that VM, well, it's, it could, depending on how you set things up, just have to sit around for a while. Right? You would have to wait for the user to come back. Well, the reason why I keep pointing back here at the floating idea is because when we get done with that virtual machine, when the user is through using it, well, do we flush all the rights that that user made to the VM so that when the next user attempts to come back in, well, they're going to get a clean experience again. I have to think about those user personalization settings when I make this decision. And there are options, as I'll show you here in just a minute, for how you can deal with that. Okay, so we are creating, again, an automated pool now. Uh, I'm going to choose a floating pool here. Uh, we are going to use full virtual machines. Okay, choose next again. Uh, here, I'm going to call this full virtual machines. And then also give that the display name there. I'm going to put it right back in the root, just like before. And uh, for the pool settings, these pool settings now have slightly different meaning. In the manual world, if I was tagging one VM to one user, it, they were always all the time mapped to that VM, well, I could make different decisions here. Maybe in that case, it's OK for the user to reset their desktop because it's their desktop. Well, in a pooled situation, if a user resets their desktop, when they go to reboot the desktop, the VM's going to go away, and the user's going to, when they reconnect back in, probably come to some other VM, especially in floating. So you have to pay really careful attention to how you, what these decisions are. Because in a floating world where I have automatic virtual machines, well, that user is, should be, that user should recognize that they are never going to get the same machine twice. And if they do, it's just, you know, a happy circumstance. Okay? I'll leave these the same here for now because you've seen all these settings. You know what they are. Choose next. This is a new screen from what we saw before. Okay, now we are actually able to, because we're using automated, to choose some of the provisioning settings that are available. First of all, do I even want to enable provisioning? Of course, this is an automatic, uh, this is an automatic pool. This is important. Do I want to stop provisioning if there's an error? Probably, because that means that something was wrong probably in my guest customization script. Now, as you can imagine, well, there's all these items here that are, are the virtual machine naming becomes an important item because, well, well, all right, well, how many VMs am I going to create? Maybe I'll create three today, but I might need three more in a month. Do I call them, you know, Bob, Sam, and Skippy? Probably not because, well, I'm going to have to keep coming up with names. So typically in these automatic naming circumstances, we don't specify the names manually. Okay, you can Right? You can, as you can see down here in the bottom, you can identify, well, desktop 002 Joe in abccorp.com uh, with the J slash jdo account. Okay, you can actually do that. Right? That's how you would create that direct user to computer mapping. But really what I'm looking for is in a floating world, uh, not so much mapping a user to a computer, but instead creating some sort of naming pattern. Okay, maybe this is going to be, uh, you know, VM uh, 1 through 100, right? Well, I can't just put in 1 through 100. 
you'll see up here that these naming patterns, I can use this specific character string, uh, curly bracket and close curly bracket to identify what number is going to be associated with this VM. It's just going to be a random number that uh, is guaranteed unique. Okay, it, essentially it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I do VM uh, dash uh, curly bracket and curly bracket, that's going to create virtual machines with names VM dash one through VM dash two, VM dash three, and so on and so forth. But there may be the circumstance where I want all of my names to be more more similar, right? Because as soon as I get to VM dash nine and VM dash ten, the number of characters means they're the name is one character longer. So I can, if I want, actually choose a fixed series of numbers. So n colon fixed equals, let's, call, let's say, 3. That would give me vm-001 to vm-999. Want to learn more? Check out cptnuggets.com.